let's review what we know about the weighted mean. Remembering the first example, that one about calculating a student's grade given uh, four different components with different weights to the, uh, towards the final grade, we needed to know the, the weight and the score of that component, multiplying them together, weight times score plus weight times score plus weight times score, adding together all the component parts, that would give us the, the weighted mean. In the second example, we didn't get the weights directly, but indirectly we could calculate them. In that problem, it was about classrooms, um, sorry, grade in a class, where the two components that we could see were um, the women's grade and the men's grade. And knowing the total number of women and the total number of men, we could take the total number of women, divide by the total students in the class to get a weight for women, and then multiply it by the score. Add that to the, the weight for men, which was calculated by the number of men, divided by the total students in the class, and times by their score. And summing those together, we'd get the weighted mean again. In this third example, we're going to follow the logic of, of, that, of uh, example two. Here we have our variable interest is age. And this is um, for the age of people in a class. Here are the number of people that have age 18, the number of people with age 19, and so on. So here are the, um, the frequencies from which we can calculate weights for the variable of interest age, or the score. In order to get the weights for each of the age categories or components, we need to have the total number of students. So adding these together, the total number of students is 667. So we should be able to calculate using example two formula. So here we have the equivalent of our example two formula where we take the frequency divided by the total to get the weight for the component age with 18 years. For the second part, second component, the weight is 120 divided by 667 times then 19, the score for the second component, and so on, until the last component, the weight is 1, divided by 667 times score 32. But let's look at this um, differently before we calculate because it's going to be pretty messy with several components here. Um, in example two we only had two men and women and this time we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine components. So it can get kind of messy. Um, and there's a greater risk of error. So instead, let's look at an alternative. What if I just multiplied 14 by 18, 120 by 19, and 1 by 32, and since 667 is being divided from each component, why don't I just do that after? That would give me the same answer, right? This is the essence of the formula in example three. <clears throat> the n, algebraically from example two can just be moved outside the summation sign. So our answer would be in either case 20.58. So to conclude all these formulas are identical depending on the kind of information you're given. Essentially you need to compute a weight from frequencies. How you do that um, is essentially up to you. We could write the alternative formula for frequencies um, where the frequency f is denoted inside the summation and then 1 over n is divided later where um, the probabilities or the weights all sum to 1. In this case for the frequencies they should sum to the total of how many how many uh, students would be in the class in these last three examples. In other words, how many total you're using to calculate your mean.